Okay, we're now ready to put together everything that we've learned about rate of change into an actually really powerful formula. We know that the final value of a quantity is equal to its starting value plus its change. So I'm going to say f is the final value of, let's say, quantity b. s is the starting value of quantity b, and c is the change in quantity b. Why are these all quantity b's? Well, because I'm going to talk about another quantity in a minute here. In particular, I'm going to say, OK, we also know, but we also know something else about change. Suppose we know that quantity b is changing at the same time as some other quantity. We'll call it quantity a. And we know the rate of change. Say. A is the change in quantity A, and we'll call the rate of change M. The reason that I'm calling it M will become clear a little bit later on. Then from the ratio equation, we know the change in quantity B is the rate of change times the change in quantity A. Using the principle of substitution, then, the final value is the starting value plus the rate of change times the change in the other quantity. OK, that seems really weird. Let's get really concrete here. So you're ordering pizza with your friends. The pizza place charges a $2 delivery fee and $7 per pizza. You pass a hat around to all your friends and you come up with 23 bucks. How many pizzas can you get for 23 bucks? So the main con quantity we're concerned with, right, is pricing. Right, notice we have several values for the cost, right? namely the $2 delivery fee. That's how much it costs if you don't get any pizzas at all, but still have the delivery guy come to your house for some reason. We have the $23. That's how much we actually want to pay. And critically, we also have the rate of change in cost relative to the number of pizzas. So we want the final amount that we pay, $23, to be the base price, $2, plus $7 per pizza times the number of pizzas that we're getting. That makes sense, right? This expression here represents the cost to buy eight pizzas. And this $23 represents what we want to spend. Once we have this equation, solving it is easy. That's no problem. It's getting to this equation that we're interested in. When we know a rate of change and a starting value, we can always set up an equation like this to relate the change in this quantity to the final value. Notice if you go ahead and solve this equation, you'll get a equals 3. You can do that as an exercise. It's setting up the equation that we're really interested in right now. Let's see another example. Suppose a rental truck costs $20 base plus 85 cents per mile. What does it cost to rent the truck and drive it 93 miles? Right, so here, right, the starting cost is $20. The rate of change is 
85 cents per mile. And then the change in the other quantity is 93 miles. Therefore, the final value is the starting value of 20 plus 85 cents times 93 miles. What does that work out to? This is totally a job for the calculator. We'll take 20 plus 85 cents times 93 miles is 99.05. So the answer is $99.05. Again, what did we do? We took the starting value, the rate of change, and the change in the other quantity and plugged them again into this formula.